Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So, unless you have taken a leave of absence from the internet over the past few days, you will know about the new ad from Gillette that attempts to solve all the world's problems by beating the bad out of men. Bullying. The Me Too movement against sexual Toxic harassment. masculinity. Is this the best a man can get? We can't hide from it. It's been going on far too long, making the same old excuses. Boys will be boys. Boys will be boys. Boys will be boys. But something finally changed. Allegations regarding sexual assault and sexual harassment. Why the hell would you use the Young Turks? So it appears Gillette is handing out moral lessons as well as shaving products. Be a good boy and don't give in to the inherent badness that is part of your male nature. Let's eradicate toxic masculinity and behave like women, because women are such pinnacles of virtue who never do or say anything bad. Now understandably, it's rubbed quite a few people up the wrong way. Now, when I started writing the transcript for this video, I actually had a lot of trouble simply because I didn't know where to begin. There is so much that is wrong with this entire situation. But I will start with the most obvious point. You know the phrase, boys will be boys? Well, nobody actually uses that phrase anymore. Pretty much everyone knows nowadays that that is not an excuse for bad behavior. It's not in common parlance. Seriously, I think the last person I heard use that phrase was my grandmother, and that would have been at least 18 years ago. The only people who say boys will be boys unironically and with any frequency nowadays are third wave feminists who've run out of things to complain about but still want to sell books. So now we've cleared up that little point. What the Gillette ad tries to do is present this concept of toxic masculinity. Now, what is toxic masculinity? It is often misinterpreted as an indictment of masculinity in general. It's not, well, at least not in theory. A nice technical definition of the term comes from feminist academic Colleen Clemens, and she states, Toxic masculinity is a narrow and repressive description of manhood, designating manhood as divined by violence, sex, status, and aggression. It's the cultural ideal of manliness, where strength is everything while emotions are a weakness, where sex and brutality are yardsticks by which men are measured, while supposedly feminine traits, which can range from emotional vulnerability to simply not being hypersexual, are the means by which your status as a man can be taken away. Now, I would argue that this description has nothing to do with masculinity and everything to do with being a jerk. But hey, that's just me. Let's look at Gillette's explanation for the ad. As a company that encourages men to be their best, we have a responsibility to make sure we are promoting positive, attainable, inclusive and healthy versions of what it means to be a man. From today on, we pledge to actively challenge the stereotypes and expectations of what it means to be a man everywhere you see Gillette. Okay. First, no, you don't have that responsibility. Your responsibility is to sell razors. End of story. Secondly, just what are these expectations that Gillette is talking about? Since when is the bad behavior displayed in that video in any way an expectation or a norm for men in society today? Most men do not in any way condone that behavior, so how can it be in any way considered an expectation? Look, I'm not sure where Gillette is getting these so-called societal expectations from, but it's uh, certainly not from the one we're living in. However, the main problem with the ad is not that it depicts all men as evil and bad and violent, it's that it depicts the few good men in the ad as the exception to the rule. It depicts these good men as the minority of male saviors in a big bad world of evil masculinity where the majority of men are at the mercy of their own inherent badness and rely on saviors to save them from themselves. That is why people are so frustrated and ticked off. This ad is like the straw that broke the camel's back riding this huge wave of anti-straight white male narrative that is permeating popular culture. That is why the reaction has been so huge. People are sick of it. Now, it is true that historically men have always been placed under pressure to restrain themselves emotionally and also placed under huge pressure to provide for their families. This results in them being able to spend less time with their children, which is obviously detrimental to men and also to their kids. Now, I don't think anyone would argue against encouraging men to express themselves if they're feeling unhappy or under pressure. 
or that they should be enabled to spend more time with their children. But the problem is, feminists have hijacked this notion like they hijack everything and are using it to push the idea that any stereotypically masculine trait is a negative thing. So things like being tough or competitive or emotionally stoic or being chivalrous or even offering to buy a woman a drink are being portrayed as, well, toxic. So how do we know this is the case? Well, it's this third wave feminist insistence that we need to bust traditional gender norms, that's how. Traditionally masculine men present a direct threat to the feminist quest for a genderless world. That's why they've started to pathologize masculinity and masculine men so profoundly. It's the same reason they don't like stereotypically feminine women. We pose a blockade to their feminist gender norm busting. And so to pathologize us, they insist that we're capitulating to the patriarchy or guilty of internalized misogyny. <laughs> that is so lame. <laughs> I mean, please, do I look like someone who hates themselves? So. This grand mission to eradicate gender norms, plus their eternal quest for revenge for a patriarchal past, is what has led feminists to adopt this toxic masculinity thing. However, they do it very insidiously. They push it as if they actually care about men and want to save them. Dear men, many of whom I really hold dear, you need to have a word with some of those who claim to be your advocates. They are not helping when they knee-jerk reject anything that suggests men can be gentle, nurturing, and self-critical. It's almost as if they've realized all their rampant man-hating over the last decade was bad PR, so they're desperately backpedaling to soften their image. For example... Uh, look, I'm really confused about the backlash towards this ad. I mean, for a start, they literally say that they believe in the best in men. It doesn't portray all men as being sexist, violent or rowdy. It reflects the reality that some men are responsible for behaviour like that and it models really good bystander behaviour from other men who step in to say this is not what we're about, this is not what we want to be and more importantly, this is not the kind of behaviour that we want our sons to see. I can't see how anyone would see that as anything other than a positive step. As you can see, that is a classic regressive leftist move. They push their agenda, that is the systematic emasculation of men until they fizzle into submission, under the guise of working for the common good. That is a textbook move from the lefty playbook and has been used right back to the Soviets. <laughs> However, what they're actually doing, whether they realize it or not, is portraying men as being born with some sort of original sin. While the intention of the Gillette ad may have been to challenge learned behavior, what it actually does, the message it actually sends to men and most pointedly to boys, is that everything they are, every single impulse they have to act in a way that is stereotypically boyish, is somehow bad and that they must spend their entire lives attempting to atone for the intrinsic evil within them. It's really very Catholic. And it's not just Gillette pushing this thing. The American Psychological Association has released a new guidance document that states traditional masculinity is harmful for men. They define traditional masculinity as including achievement, risk, adventure-focused, eschewing weakness, aggression, competition, status, and stoicism. So men with mental health problems will now be treated under the assumption that their very nature is somehow deficient and wrong. Cause that's really gonna help reduce male suicide rates. And aside from anything else, can you imagine what the world would be like today if men throughout the course of human history had resisted that primal male urge to succeed, to take risks, to seek adventure, to be emotionally stoic in the face of danger and tragedy, to compete and to continue to strive for greater and greater heights? We'd still be living like this. Men are given no encouragement in the public arena. They are given no affirmation that they have a purpose on this planet. All they receive is condescension and scolding, mostly from women who evidently know nothing about men and either don't notice or don't care about the damage they're doing. The problem is if you're a little boy growing up in this uh, soup of anti-male feeling that you see in popular culture, 
what are little boys meant to think if they just think that something that is innate to them that they were born with that they can't help uh, cha to change is somehow diseased I think it, it's just setting them up for failure and sadness and already you have the male suicide rate three times the female rate so thank you Gillette for exposing yourself for the virtue signaling freaks you evidently are and thank you also to feminist thought leaders for once again exposing your sociopathic mission to reap revenge on the male species while creating a completely homogenized society. You really are too kind with all of the ideological ammunition you continually give me. Now to all the men and boys who are watching this, don't listen to those regressive feminist morons. There is nothing pathologically wrong with you. So long as you go throughout your life with the general intention of being a good, kind and respectful person, which I'm sure most of you inherently do, then you are perfectly, perfectly fine. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment and if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for other ways you can support me.